We have this space between the bed and a swivel rocker in our nursery where we like to put a table. The space is kind of odd and we haven't been able to find anything you can easily reach from both the table and the bed without getting in the way of the rocker. I came up with this idea of using a right trapezoid as a tabletop. It maximizes the space and the angle prevents the rocker from hitting it when you swivel. Plus we wanted something to match the oak legs on our crib. I decided to use plywood since it's going to be painted and it's easy to use additive joinery to support the shelves instead of cutting dados as you can see in the video right here. The laminated plywood gives the table a lot more strength while also allowing the table to be built without screws. I started out by ripping some plywood down into 3 inch wide strips. I later decided that this was too wide but I was able to fix it after gluing everything up. I ended up needing 8 strips for all the legs. Next, I cut down the outside of each leg and then cut a length for each shelf. Each leg has a 4 inch foot portion, a 16 inch taller shelf portion, and a 6 inch small shelf portion. Watching this cut, makes me realize how close my fingers are to the blade. I probably should have used something other than my fingers to hold these pieces. Here I'm laying out the shelf pieces so I can measure for my cuts to make the last small shelf portion cut. I set up a stop block and made the first cut for this section. It was a little long, so I took it back over to the saw and took about a blade's width off, then took it back over to see if it fits. I don't show it, but I used that piece to adjust the stop block and cut the three remaining pieces. I took my time while gluing each leg together. The first piece was placed, and I used anything heavy I could find laying around. I didn't use clamps because I was worried everything would shift since it would be sitting up on the clamps and not be laying flat. I used a scrap piece of plywood to act as a spacer for the shelves, then glued up the remaining piece. I couldn't decide whether or not to remove the spacers, but I figured if the spacers ended up being glued to the flat portion, then I'd have to deal with getting those off. So I removed them. After the first leg was dry, I used a longer spacer to make sure all the joints for the shelves are lined up evenly. This process was repeated for the rest of the legs. Then I cleaned up all the edges over on the table saw. This also allowed me to narrow down the legs a bit since I thought they were too wide. Next it was on to cutting the shelves. Off camera, I cut each shelf down to the length of the back and side of each shelf, and here I'm drawing the angle between the back corner and the length of the front of the table. I set up a guide to make my cut and cut two shelves at once. To cut the third shelf, I use the off cuts from the first and second shelves to make my final cut. Then it was time to sand, but who wants to watch that? Gluing the legs of the shelf were a bit tricky because of the angled side, but I used the off cuts to create parallel clamping surfaces. And then I ended up adding some nails to speed up the assembly. I added the second diagonal leg. This allowed the shelves to slide in easily and rest without any supports. I probably could have assembled the table with the legs laying flat, but it seemed easier to hold the legs at 90 degrees rather than hold the shelves at 90 degrees. Here I learned that it's not easy putting glue on upside down. I glued and nailed three legs, but the fourth leg had a joint that I guess moved a bit during lamination and wouldn't slide on. So I used the file to open up the joint a bit.
after the glue dried, I flipped it over and it's not crooked. I like the way the intersecting plywood looks and I was kind of disappointed that I was going to be covering it up by paint. Here you can see I wasn't paying attention while filing and ended up with some grooves in the joint, but it's in the back so no one will notice. We've been using the table for about a week and I actually forgot it was there until I did this voiceover. Next it was time to build the top. About a week after finishing the base, I finally made it over to Rockler and picked up some oak boards. Side note, Rockler is about 25 minutes away and 20 minutes closer than the nearest hardwood dealer. Anyway, they are ripped down to about 6 inches wide on the table saw and I think they're sanded three sides. After that, I matched the angle of the false top on the shelves and cut them close to size. I'll trim it down to the final size after gluing. The glue up did not go well. One of the edges had an angle other than 90 degrees and I didn't check to see if my glue up was flat and the top ended up having a pretty decent bow to it. I thought I could fix it with my belt sander, but that wasn't working. I ended up cutting it apart, ripping the edges again and planing each piece so everything was flat. Then the second glue up went much better. This is the sanding not working. I painted the entire base with three coats of a color called Swiss Coffee. The paint is low VOC, but it sat in the basement for about a week before it went into the room. To finish the top, I used a varnish made by a company called Tried and True, which I also picked up at Rockler. It's a zero VOC finish with some resins in it. Most finishes seem to have a very high VOC content, so finding a zero VOC was very important since it's going in our nursery. The finish also had a pretty nice odor to it. It was kind of sweet smelling. It's recommended to rub the varnish on with a tack cloth but I couldn't find the tack cloths I bought, so I used the microfiber rag, which ended up being worse than my shop rags. So I just used the shop rags. Between coats, they say to use a quadruple zero steel wool before adding a second coat. When I apply the second coat, I found my tack cloths. I also put on a third and fourth coat. This resin takes a while to use because it has to cure for 24 hours before adding another coat. Finally, it was time to add the top to the base. I flipped the top upside down, lined with the base, and traced around it so I'd know where the glue should go and where to place the base. The base is fairly heavy, so I didn't see the need for clamps. I'm over in the corner of my shop since I was in the process of painting a bed frame for the twin bed that's going in the nursery. I recorded most of the build process for that, but I'm not sure if I'm going to make a video about it. As you can see, the angle top serves its purpose next to the swivel rocker. This thing doesn't look half bad, and my wife doesn't think it's, quote, some janky looking table. She doesn't have much faith in my woodworking abilities right now. I don't blame her, because most of the time, neither do I. But six years ago, I built Anna White's farmhouse bed frame with a circular saw and a drill, and it's still standing today. Thanks for watching. There's a link to more detailed plans in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram to see what else I'm up to.